All right, we are interviewing Jin Hee Park for the AIA Colorado Design Conference in Keystone for this fall. And Jin Hee, your first question is, for the design conference, you will be speaking on microurbanism. Can you give us a brief explanation or sneak peek of what your definition of microurbanism is? Uh, microurbanism is the new way to um, design a city uh, by breaking down the elements of the city making uh, into core elements so that it can be assembled and disassembled depending on the situation or the um, change of society or change of culture. Um, so it's, a, it's not about making a form, but it's about setting up relationship between these elements um, so that they can be more flexible to adapt to changing conditions. Okay, great. Speaking about change and um, kind of the evolution of microurbanism and architecture, how do you see your practice evolving over the next five years? Well, it's a hard to um, predict and plan. Um, the we, but the the sure thing is, I I I think our practice is gonna go um, continue to expand the the region and the different culture, um, testing out the, our ideas. What is your favorite project that you've worked on? Favorite project. Um, well, the we the, the world of hundred is called the uh, eight towers. Um, it's part of the the world of hundred project. Uh, it's a big uh, mission that we have to design uh, as a part of a um, hundred teams. They uh, and Hartung Bingham and Ai Weiwei uh, invited, um, and the, that is the occasion that we really had to think about, you know, what is the next uh, or future of the architectural practice would be like. Fascinating. Who has been influential in your past to inspire your designs today? Mm. Um, that was a hard question. Uh, it's <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> it's, because there are so many, I think uh, we it's a, not usually um, uh, in an unusual one person. Uh, I get the influence by uh, many different people, uh, and also, also even you know from my cat. I if I uh, look at um, the way he be behaves. <laughs> Thinking about you know dealing with the territories and boundaries and um, it's a lot to learn you know by um, looking at this uh, the people's um, behavior. Okay, great. It seems like you and John are still highly committed to higher education and teaching and even lectures at universities. What are your connections still with the education and universities? Hmm. Well, uh, we, we we taught um, in many different schools. Uh, currently, I'm teaching at the CCMI, and John is teaching at uh, UPenn. And the, uh, we, um, the teaching is a is good way to actually learn from the next generation. So it's very beneficial uh, for us uh, to really um, learn, you know, what they think and how they think. Great. What are some of the aspirations you have for your firm? Mm. Well, I, I wanted, um, I wanted to be, um, well, sit open testing ground uh, for new ideas. Um, creating uh, a new thing is uh, important and yes, it is challenging. I'm trying to set up that environment. Um, it's, um, but if, uh, if uh, 
it's you know people can get something out of the the process. I'll be very happy. If you were to start over or do something different, what would you do? Uh, well, probably I would um, listen less, <laughs> but less uh, <laughs> what people say about the about the, the the our practice or the you know the project that uh, we've done. Um, is um is uh, back then it was hard to distinguish um, the opinion and the you know uh, definition. Um, that's what I am trying to teach uh, to this younger generation so they can save that time. <laughs> am I doing right or wrong? You know. <laughs> good. good advice. If you could live anywhere, where would you live? Oh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm currently I'm living in three different cities: um, <laughs> in Boston, New York, and Seoul. Um, it's Victoria. People, some people are asking, but actually, many people actually, actually live uh, in that uh, condition. Um, I actually I wanted to live uh, in uh, many different. Uh, more uh, cities. Um, it's the it, the. I think it, it, being an architect is a, is naturally need to learn a lot um, from the environment that you live in. Is it you know? It's learning from every everyday life. It's not through book or course classes. So um, it's. Living in many different cities actually uh, help me so far. Okay. And what is one thing that you can't live without? Oh, one thing. Uh, uh, food. <laughs> food. <laughs> and for our last question, what's the best thing you've ever eaten? Oh, best thing. Oh, recently. Recently, I um, I had a uh, the this really nice um, uh, Mexican food uh, in uh, Brooklyn. Um, it's in, I um, escaped from this uh, sudden storm, um, but it was really nice. It's hot food. I I like hot food. It's spicy. It's, yeah. <laughs> hot food. Eating hot food in you know, pouring down rain is a, <laughs> was quite experience. <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, um, uh, managed that or, you know, but the, that experience is the, is the, so I think eating is the, you know, it's not only about, you know, food, but setting up the environment and when you eat, you know, this, your condition. It's a lot like, uh, I think, um, architecture. It's a, very experience. it's a very different, uh, you know, the 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 the, the, the your the experience is very different uh, depending on your condition, body condition, atmosphere, climate. Things like that. Well, that wraps up our interview for today. Is there anything else you would like to add before you come to Colorado in a couple months? Uh, I've never been in Colorado, so oh. I look forward to it, and I. Uh, is that again? It's completely new environment that I can learn a lot. Well, we look forward to having you. We can't wait to see what your observations are of Colorado and the social atmosphere and the food here too. So. <laughs> <laughs> that <one. laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you. Looking forward to see you. <laughs>